Hello there. Today I want to dive into three CSS features that might not be on everyone's radar, but they can truly elevate your website's or app's interface. And the best part? They're very easy to use. You know what? Let's be more real. There are a few things I often see on the web that really bug me. In this video, I'm going to share them with you and show you how to fix them. And trust me, you want to stick around for this. Let's start with the most annoying one, which bothers me a lot while I'm looking for something on a blog post or even a landing page. Actually, let me show it to you on our own website, Pajamas. This is one of our blog posts, and as I scroll down, I want to jump to the View Transition Gotcha section. Wait, where am I? I'm lost. If I scroll up a little bit, you can see that the heading was behind our header, like we have a fixed header here. I expect this heading to be visible and also a little bit of a space above it uh, would make a better experience here. So how can we fix this? There is a property in CSS called scroll margin. Let's open the dev tools. I'm gonna inspect the H2 here. And to be fair, we already have a scroll margin, but the value isn't quite right. So I'm gonna add a new CSS rule here and I'm gonna make it a H2 and add a scroll margin of 100 pixel. And to be more precise, this should be block or top, right? And I don't want this to overwrite that, so I'm just gonna disable it and go back up. And let's try it again. There you go. See, now it's visible. And you don't feel you're lost or something. Okay, we can lift this to H2, but what if we want scroll margin for our H2 or H3s or H4s? One way is to use a universal selector with a pseudo class of target. And right now all the targets are gonna have this scroll margin top. But if you want to be more precise, you can add multiple selectors like this for H2s and H3s and so on. But if you ask me, I would say let's be more fancy and use the is selector here like this. And now we have it for everything like H2, H3, H4 and it's gonna work like a charm. Okay, now that the selector part is settled, let's talk about the value here. 100 is the size of my header, okay? But I don't want my element to be edge to edge with my header. And I would like to have more space between them. Even if you don't have a fixed header, it's better not to have this heading stick to our viewport. So what's the best way to add this extra space here? I mean, unit wise. Okay, in my case, I have to add the extra space to my header size. I use the calc function here. Uh, Let's say this is 100 pixel, okay? I can simply use the pixel unit here, right? But I'm having this value for different elements, H2, H3, H4, and it would be worse if I was using, uh, let's say, a universal selector, right? And in this case, I have no idea what I'm targeting. And I want to be more dynamic. I want to have different margins for different elements. So if I have a H1, I would like to have more margin. And if I have a H4, I would like to have less margin here, okay? So the question is, how can we be more dynamic here? We can do this using different units. For example, we can use EX unit. EX is equal to the height of your X letter in your font. Also, we can use LH unit. LH is equal to the line height of your element. So if I go back here and use, for example, like, to LH. Oh, we don't have this variable on our website, so I'm just gonna have a 100 pixel. And let's try it out again. As you can see, we have that extra element using LH unit. EX has a better browser support, so you may want to go with that, but to me, this is a progressive enhancement, so I'm happy with LH too. By the way, I learned about LH unit from Chris Coyer and his blog. So give this article a read if you like. All right, let's move on to our second CSS feature. 
I will explain this using another UI problem I often see around the web. And chances are you've also noticed that when browsing a website using a dark theme. Let's switch our website's theme to dark and take a look at the scroll bar here. Do you see how it's in light colors and out of place? How can we fix this? It's actually very simple, but let me give you a bit of introduction first. Modern devices allows us to choose between light and dark modes, right? But when you start a simple web page, everything defaults to a light mode. Even if I change my color preference, everything stays the same. We have a CSS property called color scheme, which allows the browser to alter this default behavior based on the user preferences. So if I add this property to my root element, now everything is dark. Even if I create a scroll bar, the scroll bar has dark colors. These changes aren't limited to the background and scroll bar. They even affect form control elements like this. See, right now even my date picker is in dark mode. Currently, the way I'm using this property forces everybody to see this web page in a dark mode. But maybe it's better to give them a choice, right? The great news is that this property can accept two values. Now it tells the browser that this document is comfortable being rendered in a dark or even a light mode. And now if I change my color settings to light, the web page is in a light mode. Also, I don't have to use this property only for the root element. I can specify it for any element that I want from no is form element. Now if I switch to dark mode, only my form elements turn to dark colors. There is also another way to add a color scheme to your web page, and that is using a meta HTML tag. Let me show you here. Okay, I can have my meta tags here. And there you go. Now the entire document is in the dark mode, which is exactly like when you add the CSS property to the root element. The cool thing about using the meta tag is that the browser knows your preferences before loading the CSS, which is great. But in general, you should be careful when using the meta tag or applying the CSS property to the root element, because in that case, this property applies to the entire document and all the elements, which might not be the thing that you want in some cases. Actually, the best way of using this property is to use it together with the prefers color scheme media feature. This gives you complete control over where you want to make changes based on the user preferences. Now let's fix this on Pajama's website. As you see, I'm in dark mode, but the scroll bar is still light. So we go for the root element here and we add this color scheme property and we add two values of dark and light. Okay, cool. The scroll bar turned to dark, but we still have a problem. Let me show you one thing. I will switch the website's theme to light. The scroll bar is still in dark mode. Usually websites add a dark or light class to the body of element when you switch between themes, right? As you can see, there is a light class and a dark class assigned to the body. But because of the scroll bar, we need to apply the CSS color scheme property to the root element, not the body. So let me show you how we can handle this only in CSS. We can specify that our root element should have a color scheme property of dark when it has a body with a class of dark as a child. Now see, the scroll bar is in dark mode. If you switch back to light, the scroll bar is in a light mode. Now it works perfectly. Trust me, from now on, you're going to see this problem a lot, but now you know how to fix it. Okay, last, but definitely not the least. To be fair, this is not annoying, but fixing it can make your titles look much better and easier to read. Okay, let's head over to our blog and I will show you exactly what we want to improve. 
Take a look at the title of the articles here. And do you see in some cases like this, we have an orphan word where the title is wrapped. When it comes to titles and captions, our eyes prefer equality. It doesn't want to see one line long and the other one very short. And this is where the text wrap property comes in handy. Let me add a new CSS rule here for our H3s. And we add the text wrap property and it has a value of balance. Nice. I love how it gives us well balanced headings and we don't have to have those single words in the last line of our titles. The balance value of this property makes the text to break in a way that the length of each line is equal or very close to equal, which enhances the titles for a better read. The browser support for this property shouldn't matter because this is another progressive enhancement and you can use it in production without any hesitation now. Okay, those are my CSS properties. Let me know in the comments about yours and your experience. Also, don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.